To help us unpack this is a communication strategist and a regular political commentator, uh, Makosini Mgichwa. He joins us now via Zoom. Uh, Makosini, Happy New Year. Uh, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Always good to talk to you. Thank you very much, Peter. Same to you, my friend. All right. So um, I'm just wondering, uh, this speech, I, I, you know, ahead of these things, we like to big these things up and, and say how important it is. But the party is going through a very difficult time on many fronts. And he even talked about it. Do you think that this speech did what it needed to do at this time in the party's history? Look, I think, um, in my view, Cyril Ramaphosa, um, and I think uh, he is um, often underrated in this respect, is that he's a salesman. Um, he's a very good salesman. I think that's why he would have done very well in business. He's a very good salesman, and he went out there uh, and to try to sell the ANC to the potential funders who are their business people. Uh, whom he would want uh, to, to make some contributions to the ANC to uplift it from the, the, the dark financial position that it stands in. I don't know if uh, those people who were there were swayed by what the president said. Uh, certainly, it didn't sway me. Um, I think that he delivered a speech. He was expected to deliver a speech, but nothing in that speech has anything tangible that says uh, to us, uh, you know, the ANC is going to be lifted out of where it is and uh, from the situation where it's actually, it, many people would say it's causing harm uh, to the country. Uh, it, it, it has uh, mm -hmm. suffered the worst uh, political performance uh, in, the, in the elections since 1994. Uh, you know, there's record unemployment. Uh, the, you know, uh, Special Investigations Unit will tell you that corruption is, an, it, is at an all-time high, at least malfeasance in government, this is theft of uh, public funds. Uh, you have uh, the Houses of Parliament, uh, you know, being bent down uh, in the manner that they were. And uh, you'd think that uh, that constitutes a big crisis uh, that would have a response from the government that says that they are, you know, at the top of the situation, you get introduced to a suspect who looks like you wouldn't be able to rob a tax shop, let alone enter the houses uh, of parliament and cause such mm. extensive damage. So all these things, the sentiment is very low, and what we see is negative. It doesn't give us mm. any hope. So uh, it's very difficult to have that one speech, uh, you know, changing all that and making yeah. us seeing things differently. Uh, you know, I don't think that many people mm. would have been swayed by that. Or perhaps we're being a little unfair because, I mean, the January 8th statement perhaps is the main uh, communication tool during this uh, weekend and that maybe this was more about the dinner and more about fundraising. And so maybe was that, a good enough message for the purpose of this evening? Yes, I mean, like I said, mm -hmm. um, look, I mean, of course, we'll have to wait for the January 8th statement to hear what he's got to say, but um, I doubt that that statement is mm -hmm. going to continue. It is going to contain anything that will make people feel positive. Let me make you an example of a January 8th statement that I covered some 21 years ago. It was in Kimberley, addressed by then President Abumbi, the ANC on that day made an announcement that uh, poor households would receive a portion of free electricity and free water. They still benefit from that to this day, that announcement that was made 21 year, uh, years ago. But the ANC was in a much better position that time. Government was in a much better mm -hmm. position that time. It could do things for people. Right now, you know, the fiscus is, uh, is, uh, is, is emptied. There's a collapse of public infrastructure. There are just so many things that are contesting for the, you know, little government resources that are available. So I don't know if the president would be able to make an announcement tomorrow of that magnitude and have the reaction that that speech 21 years ago had. So it, 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 all that the president can do is to give us weights. And I don't think that if you look at even the electoral performance of the ANC in the last election, I don't think that you can expect that statement to have um, yeah. you know, an effect of lifting people up. I don't think that it will happen. But we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, a lot of expectations in the January 8th statement, but he was talking to business leaders. And what I, I guess is a concern for me is he talked about creating an enabling environment for business, cutting red tape. I, I've, we've heard this so many times in the past. He talked about building a capable state, professionalizing the civil service. We've heard this before so many times. And I just wonder, does it start to be a thing that we stop listening because they keep on saying it, but we don't quite often see the progress? You know, Peter, for me, what is important is not so much what the president said, but it is what the president did not say. Mm. Um, this is uh, the election year, you know, uh, in, in, in December of this year, the president is going to be contested for the presidency of the ANC. And uh, if uh, 2007 is anything to go by, the contestation between the two factions, uh, they affect uh, state performance. For instance, you see these things that are happening and uh, you're not getting any answers as to why they're happening because, uh, you know, state security uh, could be compromised, it could be factions even inside such state uh, organs that are supposed to, to, to ensure that our, our, our state is safe. So with the looming, um, you know, uh, elections within the ANC and the contestations that are going to take place. And let me say this to you, Peter. You know, <clears throat> you have two factions within the ANC that don't like each other very much. They don't see eye to eye, right? Um, but you don't see them contesting in a way that we saw, for instance, during the time of the government of national unity or government of provincial unity, where you'll have uh, ANC MECs trying to show that they can do a better job than IFP MECs, for example, and IFP MECs working hard and, 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 and wanting publicity and wanting to be seen to be doing better than the others. So there, 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 were, there were contestations that were out in the open that were positive in my view. Now you have contestations that are not out in the open in the sense that you would have maybe an, a, a minister that is in the RET faction saying, we in the RET faction are working very hard. We are the one, we are the, the faction that delivers so that they stand better chance of being elected. You don't hear the same of the Chuma Mina faction of President Ramaphosa. So it means that the, contest has the, the contestations are taking place somewhere where we don't see them. So this you know, builds the the, um, the speculation mm. and also the suspicion that some of the things that are happening, like, uh, you know, the, the arson that took place in parliament, that, like the attack on the constitutional court and many other things, the July uh, 2021 uh, uprisings that cost this country more than 300 lives and more than 35 billion rands of money that we don't have. All these uh, things, many people believe that are as a result of the contestations that are happening, are happening inside the ANC. And if that is true, then it means the contestations mm. are negative. And, uh, you know, in view of that, it's very difficult that we can have a January 8th statement that can lift us, lift our mood and make us positive about what we see. But again, we'll have to wait and see what mm. he says uh, tomorrow. The way you're speaking is that this is a, a major, major uh, issue. Uh, with that in mind, then, he didn't spend a lot of time on it, but he did say that the party is going to renew and rebuild even though there are people within our ranks who are fighting this and resisting this, but it's going to happen whether they like it or not. What do you think he meant by that? Look, I think that the president wants to be seen, to be strong, to be taking control. Uh, and, and he needs to do that. You, you cannot be a leader and, see, and be seen to be weak and unable to take any decision and, uh, you know, not being firm uh, in where you stand. You, you, you don't win the confidence of people by being such a leader. So, as you say, contestation and you raising questions about some of the things that seemingly are not connected, um, are you fearful that we're going to see quite a bit of disruption in the run-up to these elections? Look, I don't know if it, there will be disruptions, but I think there will be contestations uh, that are not going to be positive 
if we look at the you know the, the, the recent history like in 2007 and in 2017 you know the contestations that we saw there you know were not positive and in some instances they affected the functioning of uh, of the government because uh, you know the both factions would have their own loyalists within uh, you know uh, the structures of government mm. but i think the point that i wanted to make the earlier we were interrupted there was an interruption with the, the point that i i, I wanted to, um, you know to make is that uh, you know, as we move towards uh, these these elections, you know, um, you, we have to look at the membership of the ANC itself. Is it the kind of membership that is likely to respond to a message of renewal, mm. or is it uh, a kind of um, you know membership of the ANC uh, that uh, you know the ANC got during the time when it was trying to raise a, a, you know the number of membership? to one million and it attracted all sorts of uh, undesirable characters people who were there as careerists people who wanted to have access to state power so that they can enrich themselves i don't know if the renewal is at the level of a uh, conceptualization that people are talking about it or has it reached uh, implementation stage where you know there is a purging of uh, members who are mm. undesirable members who are in the ANC so that they can access, uh, you know, state resources for self-enrichment. I don't know whether the renewal has reached uh, that level of membership where, you know, you have now people who are eager and burning, you know, uh, they, they have a fire in their stomach. They want to serve the people of South Africa. That I do not know about. So if it hasn't reached that point, it only remains words. Yeah. You know, we can be encouraged about it that at least the thinking is in the right direction. But I don't think that it can bear fruit right now. All right. Perhaps in conclusion, again, we'll have to wait to hear tomorrow. Uh, but he did talk about the ANC, the party. He talked about the leagues, uh, the Women's League, the Veterans League the Youth League, and I just wonder, at this time, uh, the state of the party, what does he need to say to energize these leagues? And also, what's the state of the tripartite alliance at a, a date such as the January 8th statement and setting an agenda for the year ahead and looking back? Look, I, I think, uh, you know, the president is quite right uh, insofar as, uh, you know, the youth league, it is on a rebuild mode. You can see that, uh, you know, it is getting uh, traction uh, as it rebuilds itself. Um, you know, the women's league uh, may have its own, uh, you know, issues with him and uh, the positioning and all sorts of things. And uh, if he reaches out to them and, you know, draws them into the fold uh, so that they work together in advance uh, matters, uh, of, um, you know, women emancipation and gender equality and all those things that are critically important because the Women's League has access to the top leadership of the ANC. And if they drive the agenda of issues that are important for women, mm -hmm. they will be able to get some traction. The same goes for the Youth League. And I think, uh, you know, insofar as um, um, uh, the Tripartite Alliance, I think uh, its relationship, his relationship, uh, with uh, the secretary, uh, the general secretary of the SACP, uh, Blayton Zimande, seems to be good, and uh, the, 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 the noises that are coming out of the SACP are supportive of the president and his agenda. Uh, I think the same can be said of uh, Cosatu as well. So, in that respect, he's not getting opposition, stiff opposition, uh, from the tripartite alliance, uh, and and so I think that uh, you know if he's able to galvanize them, that would be good for his leadership and good for the ANC generally. All right, well, we wait with great interest to hear what the president might say in the January 8th statement. In the meantime, thank you so much indeed for joining us and, and unpacking uh, tonight at the fundraising dinner speech and what might all of this mean going forward. Marcosini, always good to talk to you. Not a problem, thank you very much.